Hello everybody, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Welcome to my Facebook Live Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. I hope you guys all had a wonderful weekend. We had a really good weekend. It's been really dreary here uh, today, kind of rainy, misty, on and off. Hi Jenny, Kathy, Teppy, Sarah, welcome. So yeah, it's been kind of gloomy here in Wisconsin, and I didn't even leave the house, so <laughs> I have been stamping all day. I have another big project going out um, early this week. So last week I told you guys that I started offering pre-cut cardstock packs with my online class, my monthly online class. Now that's something different from the kit class that I did earlier in the month, so... I am getting all of my pre-cut cardstock packs ready to roll, and I was just die cutting some rectangle shapes before I came on. A lot of work goes into those, but when you get the pre-cut cardstock pack on the other end, it's so fun, right? <laughs> okay, what's happening this week? Um, I wanted to let everybody know if you ordered my latest online class, which is the Come Together class that I just released, uh, I had a pre-registration for it maybe two Fridays ago. Um, I did send out an email with the PDF file on 917, and I've been getting quite a few people who are saying that they got their kit, well, I'm sorry, this is from my kit class, that they got their kit in the mail, but they didn't get the PDF, but I did send it. so. I've been telling people to do a search for it. I am resending them, don't worry about that. But when I say do a search in your email, I don't mean that you should scroll through pages and pages of emails that you didn't read. That is like, bleh. <laughs> um, what I do mean is that you take my email address and put it into your search engine on your email platform. So you would put kelly at stampabove.com and then you're gonna hit that little magnifying glass and it'll bring up all the emails that I've sent you and you'll probably find it there. So, and um, somebody just said that they got their kit. I know I was really, really shocked at how fast the kits got to everybody, but I did send them priority mail. So that's another thing that I need to figure out. Um, this is my first kit class that I have ever done that had um, product in it. And I really missed the boat on the shipping costs that I incorporated into the price of the class. So you could kind of say I lost my butt. <laughs> I had estimated about $3.50 to ship. And if I hadn't gone with priority at $7 a piece, it would have actually cost me more. So I'm going to have to reevaluate that. The one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to chintz on my packaging. Um, I hear from people, I, I know that, I know lots of stampers who get kits in the mail and the cardstock is bent and things aren't in good shape. And I think that's most important. So if I have to raise my price a little bit, I would rather do that and have the kits coming to you in perfect condition and not getting them all smashed and bent and whatever. Beth got hers. Yay. And she made her cards already. Way to go. Hi, Larry. Hi, Nanette. Hi, Denise. Welcome. So um, I'm going to reevaluate the next class to see how much I'm going to charge for that because um, Ash, that's the one that I do with Ashley Pfeiffer out of Canada. It's our Creativity Without Borders. And Ashley said that her shipping was quite a bit more than she estimated it was too. So we're going to have to sit down and look at those numbers. But um, for those of you that did get your kit in the mail, what did you think? I'd like some feedback on that. Yeah, so um, I thought it was a pretty cool kit if I do say so myself. All right, um, what did you guys do this weekend? Did anybody have any big events or go on a little mini vacation or anything like that? Yeah, Roz says mail prices are sky high. They really are expensive. And um, it's something that I have to really think about. And Sharon, don't get me wrong, I did not lose money on the kit, but I cut into the little bit of profit that I had built in there. So, um, yeah, I didn't lose money, but I, I did lose profit. I guess that's a good way to say it. So, um, 
We went to a wedding yesterday. My stepdaughter Stephanie's sister-in-law got married and we were invited to that wedding. We've done a lot of things with the, their family over the years. Um, for those of you, some of you might not know, but my stepdaughter Stephanie is the oldest and she lost her husband several years ago to a very tragic accident, work accident. And um, so she's super, super close to his family. They're a fabulous family. And we got to go to their youngest daughter's wedding yesterday. So that was really fun. And um, the food was fantastic. The decorations were beautiful. The bride and groom looked fantastic. And they had a blast. So it was really, really fun. Hi, Michael Deal. It's good to see you on here. And Lisa... Harvest Festival in Phillips, way to go. Phillips is such a beautiful little town in northern Wisconsin. I love driving through there. I don't get through there as often as I used to because I drive up um, from Minocqua over instead of coming up the other side of the state. When I take my mom with, then I come up the other side of the state. Um, somebody just said something and I missed it. Hang on just a second. Okay, Terry says, receiving her kit was awesome. And um, yeah, others have commented that their kits are, are bent. Not my kits that I'm sending out because I put them in a box and then in a priority mail envelope. And um, that's what made the postage kind of a little more because the boxes weigh more than a padded envelope. So... And Diana just asked, how is Steve doing? Steve is fantastic. Steve got yelled at a little bit this week. Not going to lie. Um, Steve did way too much. You know, he's not one to sit around and do nothing. And it's really hard for him to not get things done. And we have, you know, fall is a super busy time for us. He's getting ready for hunting season. And we had to close up our pool last week. And rather than wait for help, he did it all himself. My son-in-law was going to come over and help, but he didn't wait, and he went to physical therapy, and they couldn't even do anything with him because his knee was too swollen because they told him he was doing too much. So he got yelled at at physical therapy. He got yelled at at home because I told him that too, and then I yelled at him again after he got back, <laughs> and there was not really any yelling, but I said, I told you. <laughs> so he did take a couple days of rest, and um, it seems like a leave really helps with the swelling. So that's good. And they said that his knee is going to have swelling for quite a while because he does too much stuff. So there you have it. But it's all healed. He's got twin um, scars on his knees. And uh, yeah, Diana said, Steve is a bad boy. He is a bad boy. <laughs> um, he, did take the, he did take his motorcycle out for a ride yesterday. Haley and her fifth and sixth graders were doing a brat fry fundraiser at our local grocery store. So he rode over there and did that. I went shopping to get him clothes to wear to the wedding. So what we found is that his clothes don't fit him very well and they're kind of outdated. So who's here? Hello. I'm coming around by you. Okay, so we can't really show that card. Yeah, we can. No, we've talked about it, Linda and I. I'll show him, I'll show him the front. I can show him the front. Okay, well, hurry up. I'm live here. I know. I'm coming around. <laughs> I can't get through this. I know. It's bomb. busy in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come by my beautiful bride. Aww. They don't Can see me. Can you see? They don't see there me. There you go. Oh. Hello, everybody. <laughs> beautiful stampers. Uh, I just, I got this beautiful card from... Linda Bunce. Linda Bunce. Uh, it says... Can you see it? There we go. It says... For continued healing, take a walk among the leaves. It relieves stress, promotes relaxation, and is quite therapeutic. Thank you so much. Because I am going hunting this week, and I'm so happy. <laughs> and my knee feels so good because of all of your support and my beautiful bride taking care of me. And guess what? My favorite night to drink is Sunday night because then I can watch everybody else drive to work in the morning. Stop it. You're mean. <laughs> okay, so there was our guest appearance by Steve, and you can see that he is feeling much better. So that's been a real relief. No infections this time. 
no problems. I think we're in the clear now. So everybody's bringing hearts up on the screen, Steve. You're getting lots of hearts, lots of hearts. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't remember where we were, but I am starting to cut cardstock packs for the last um, for the last online class that I just did, and it's with the Come Together Suite too. So people could order the class for twenty five dollars. You could get the class and the pre-cut cardstock for $40. Um, if you ordered just the class, I had a few people who did email me and say they wanted to add the cardstock pack on after they just ordered the online class. If you would like to do that and you have already ordered the online class for $25, I will invoice you for an additional $15 for that cardstock pack. So for any of you that want to do that, let me know. That's a separate thing. It's not something you can click on on my... Um, on my blog because there's no PayPal button for just $15, but I will let you guys get that cardstock pack. I am going to be adding a few extra cardstock packs over and above what I have ordered already that people are um, signed up for. So we'll have some more left if anybody's interested. Uh, Monday is the last day for buy one or buy three, get one free. Buy one, get three free. That would be great, right? Buy three, get one free. And this is our list of designer series paper that are available with that promotion. That promotion goes through Monday. So on the 30th, is that 30th? Yep, the 30th, it will be over. I wanted to make sure you guys know about that. And then this week, Tuesday, the Stamping Society has a blog hop. And the Stamping Society um, is also a tutorial. It's an exclusive tutorial, but we do a blog hop first. So everybody does projects for the blog hop. Then we have a private exclusive tutorial that we share. When you place an order with me, you get that tutorial. Last month, it was the Nature's Beauty tutorial stamp set. And um, this next month, it is pigment sprinkles. And oh my Lord, I had so much fun with pigment sprinkles. I almost blew it tonight by showing you the cards that I made, thinking that I was I already did them. But the blog hop is on the first, so I'm glad I didn't blow that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, my drawers. <laughs> thank you very much for telling me that. Um, let's see, what did Teppy just said something? Uh, okay, Teppy, um, that trimmer is only available to demonstrators, and this is a customer base here, so um, that's something to ask on our team page. And for those of you that may not know what's going on, Stampin' Up! is uh, has their new paper trimmers available for a pre-order for demonstrators only. And then they're going to see how that goes because they don't want to put the new paper trimmer out there for customers and have it go on back order right away. So, hi, Haley Jade. My daughter just popped on here. So, that's okay, Teppy. Don't worry about it. Um, so, what else do I have? I have cards to share. So, Linda not only sent this gorgeous card for Steve, but she also sent this card for me. Oh, hang on. I bent it. Look at how super cute that is. That is one of our exclusive host sets. You can only get this when you place a minimum $150 order or when you um, have a party, you can get it with your rewards. And this is from Linda Bunce. And uh, she actually won the stamp set from me. So she made me a little card and isn't that just precious? I know, I love it, right? <laughs> oh, and I have to tell you guys, um, I have been out of Facebook jail since Friday night. I actually got locked up for three days this week. So that's the longest period of time they have isolated me. But you can't keep a good stamper down, right? <laughs> oh, we thought we had the whole Facebook jail thing figured out that it had something to do with how many groups you were in, but um, Dina got thrown back in jail too. So that is, uh, and so did I. So that was not what was going on. Then I got this gorgeous card. Isn't that pretty? And this was from Joanne Prosser. And Joanne is sending me a thank you card for picking her name. And she won the Garden Impressions Designer Series paper that she made this card with. And she said that she is having so much fun making beautiful cards with that Designer Series pack of paper. So I'm so happy to hear that, Joanne. Thank you for the beautiful card. 
And then I received a card from Susie Fonder. And look at how pretty this is. So I was looking at this and I'm like, I'm like, what is going on with those pumpkins? Well, Susie explained to me, as us stampers always do, right? She said, um, she was thanking me for access to my online classes. And um, Susie recently joined my team. And when you join my team, you get all of my online classes that are valued at $20 or less for free for being on my team. So that's a huge benefit. Um, whether you're a business builder or a discount shopper, that is one of the benefits of being on my team. And um, she said she used the blends on the designer series paper. So those pumpkins are not colored on the paper, but she took her blends and she colored them. And that was really cool. So thank you for sharing that with me, Susie. I really appreciate it. And then I received a card from Jill. She was the winner of the Floral Essence uh, stamp set last week, I believe. And she sent me this adorable card. And this was one of our paper pumpkin kits, I'm pretty sure. So thank you so much, Jill. That is beautiful. And then I got a present in the mail. Well, I actually got two presents. The one I can't show you because it's upstairs, but it was a tank top from my friend Lori Krause. She's a demonstrator from Michigan. And um, we do Sunday Fun Day. You guys hear me talk about Sunday Fun Day all summer here. And um, she found a tank top that says Sunday Fun Day on it, and she sent it to me. So that was really sweet. And I got this from my upline, Ann Hebner. And Ann is the person that I signed up under. And she sent this adorable little card. Hang on, I'm going to open it up. Look at this. Look how cute that is. This is using the Autumn Hellos. That's that um, stamp set. You can do apples or pumpkins. And how cute is that? And then she also sent me a couple different samplers of our designer series papers. The first frost and I can never remember what this stuff is called because I haven't used it yet. But I'm going to. You guys know what it's called, right? And a roll of ribbon. So thanks, Anne. If you're watching, sometimes Anne watches me. But I just thought that card was stinking adorable. Okay, let me move these because we need to... Oh, I have a couple more things to show you. Um, let me move this over here. Who got the paper pump? Mercury glass. That's what it is. It's mercury glass paper. Thank you guys so much. I can never remember that. Um, paper pumpkin kit this month. Who got the paper pumpkin kit? Stinking adorable little treat holders. These are so cute. Now, for those of you that might not be familiar with Paper Pumpkin, it's in a pretty purple box this month for Halloween. And no, you cannot get this kit. You have to order or subscribe to Paper Pumpkin by the 10th of the month to get that month's kit. So you can't go back. Sandra says she did, Betty did, Debbie got it. Um, this kit, and it comes with tissue paper, they're so fun because you feel like you're getting, like, it, it's a magnificent little gift. And it's a little kit. You get an ink spot, stamp set, and all the goodies to make. I think there was 20 of these little boxes. And then when you're a subscriber through me or you're on my team, they get this benefit too. I will email you a PDF file with about 15 more alternate ideas to use your kit pieces with. And these are the two cards that I made. Yeah, so it's all part of the Paper Pumpkin blog hop last Thursday. So, um, of course, those little skeletons are just stinking adorable. When I put this in front of my camera, I can't see anymore. So I'm like, do I have it in the camera? What's going on? So, yeah, super, super cute little stamp set. So if you are not a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, I highly recommend Paper Pumpkin. It's just a really fun way to... Um, make cards and I give you a ton of extra ideas to go with it every month every month when you subscribe to me if you join my team you also get that same benefit okay now we're gonna award prizes from last week I have a pack of the graceful glass six by six vellum designer series paper and this is beautiful there's you can do the stained glass technique with it it's gorgeous 
Our winner for commenting last Sunday is Jean Shute of Beulah, North Dakota. Jean, this is going to be on its way in the mail to you, hopefully tomorrow. If not tomorrow, then Tuesday. And next for sharing the um, Facebook Live, I'm like, I couldn't get my words. For sharing the Facebook Live, our winner is getting a Wood Texture 6x6 Designer Series paper. I hope you guys, can you see that? It's, it looks kind of dark. There we go. I don't know. There we are. I'm not going to take her dress off the back. Yeah, this paper. Ah, I love this paper. Sue Jorgensen wins for sharing. Sue is from Appleton, Wisconsin. Congratulations, Sue. Thank you so much for sharing. And last but never least is our winner for placing an order with me. And I have the Boca Dots to give away. This is a fantastic little background stamp set. And Michelle Ols Olson of Austin, Texas is the winner. So you guys watch your mailbox this week. I will get these out in the mail. I think I'm gonna have to go to the store tomorrow. Um, the pre-cut cardstock packs that I'm sending out are not gonna be put in boxes, but I have to go get some envelopes. So I'll probably get to the post office then. All right, who is, I see Peggy Cation is on. I hope I say your last name right. Who is ready to start stamping? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, I know, I am. Okay. Let me get set up here. I don't want my laptop to fall on the floor. Oh, that would be horrible. Hang on, somebody just popped up on my screen here. Um, what are we gonna do first? Let's see, I think we're gonna do this one first. I have a bunch of projects to share with you tonight. And, um, cause I made up a whole bunch of different sample-y things. So yeah, I always like it when people do that because you get to see different ideas and I hope you guys like it too. Um, if you don't like it, let me know because it is very time consuming. <laughs> and if I'm doing something that's like, nah, who cares? Let me know so I don't waste my time. All right, oops, I just hit my light. I don't know what that's in there for, but we are ready to flip the camera around here. Hang on, let me get everything set up here so it's straight. And for those of you that get motion sickness, please close your eyes. Hi, Cindy Yellers. I'm gonna flip right now. Go right, whoops, oh, oh, hang on. Are we still on the screen? Cause Facebook didn't like something that I did. Okay, I have to unmirror, hang on. I thought I blew it there for a second, but we're okay. There we go. Whew, I don't wanna. Mess things up at this point. I've done that before where I accidentally click on something and it turns us off. That's horrible. You can open your eyes, by the way. And I have you unmirrored, so that's good. I'm going to bring in a piercing mat. For those of you that may be new to me, this is just one of our paper piercing mats. They're in the big catalog. And I like to cover it with a piece of um, printer weight paper to keep the ink off of it. We are going to be making a card using the Monster Bash Designer Series paper. Now, the card that we're going to make is a Halloween card, but I know not everybody's into Halloween, right? Don't go anyplace because I have some Christmas cards to show you with what I'm going to make right here. So, while this may be Halloween, please know that these things can be adjusted to just about anything that you need. All right. And stamp sets... I am going to be using this Everything Festive. Now, this is a stamp set that is in the mini holiday mini catalog. You've got Valentine's. Here, this has snowflakes on it for winter, um, Halloween, more Christmas, winter wonderland, Valentine, and New Year. Greetings for so many different occasions, right? I love it when a stamp set does that because you get more bang for your buck. You can use this for many, many different things. Okay, where's my card? Right here. So I'm going to bring in my bits and pieces and get my little cheat sheet up there. Oh, by the way, all of the cards that I'm showing you tonight will be on my blog tonight because I was a busy person today. I was a busy little stamper. I heard from several of you that you were stamping today. And you were busy too.
But I have my blog. I have all my photography done. My blog is set up. The only thing I'll need to do when we're done stamping here is to um, download this Facebook Live so that I can load it up to YouTube to put it on my video or my blog. And that usually takes anywhere from a half an hour to an hour. So I will have a blog post up as soon as we're done here tonight and that loads. Okay, um, I'm also gonna be using the Wonderfully Wicked stamp set. This is a cool little stamp set also in the Holiday Mini Catalog. So our card base is basic black. It's five and a half by eight and a half and I've already folded it and burnished that edge good. And then we're going to be using these books. I love these books from the Monster Mash Designer Series paper. It's got like newsprint on one side and the books on the other. Get this out here. <laughs> Mickey says, how did I miss that set? I know, it, it, you, it just didn't pop out at you because I almost missed it too, Mickey. Now one thing you want to be sure when you're putting on a designer series paper like this that it's right side up, right? I don't want my books to be upside down. So make sure that you're paying attention that you're not putting it upside down. So we've got that. And then let's see. Um, I need to bring in my Memento black ink pad here. Oh, and Diana says she's getting ready for her monthly stamp class. Good for you. I have stamp club tomorrow night also, but I am already ready for that. I got ready for it last week. Okay, I have a piece of crumb cake here that's three and three quarters by five, and then pumpkin pie that's four by, whoops, five and a quarter by four. And I'm just going to put my happy Halloween right there in the middle. And then this fun little bat that's from the wickedly wonderful or wonderfully wicked you get the spider the bat and the cat with the spider web and I'm gonna take this bat and put it right here and isn't that just spooky looking yeah, I thought so <laughs> now I'm doing something a little different here I'm going to add my crumb cake to my pumpkin pie and I think because this card was so simple to make I just felt like I needed a little extra on the inside extra meaning that orange layer and then instead of stamping on white I'm stamping on crumb cake which is going to carry over from the front so isn't that kind of neat it's something different right okay and then I've got a piece of basic black here now this piece is uh, four and a quarter by three and I'm going to take my white crafting if you caught my um, blog hop on Friday with the Totally Techniques design team, you saw me do this technique, and this is chalkboard. Now, I just inked up my sponge in the white craft ink, um, and yes, we do still sell these. I've had lots of people say, since that's retired, what are you getting? No, no, no. It's not retired. It's just not in the same place you expect it to be. So let me show you where this ink pad is at in our catalog. On page 180, you get an uninked pad and a white craft refill. So you just you just squirt the refill on your uninked pad and there you go. But it does come as a set for $9.50. So, page 180. Okay don't want anybody to think that I'm showing you stuff you can't get your hands on. I was really frustrated the other day. Well, I'm going to shut up now and show you how to do this technique. <laughs> we'll talk about my frustration a little later. Okay, so you saw me kind of wipe that off on my scrap paper. You don't want globs of it. And you're just going to take your sponge and do a little circular motion here. And that's going to kind of wipe some white onto your black layer that makes it look like a chalkboard and that's where the chalkboard technique comes in. Then I'm going to take this no tricks just treat. So this is a fun little greeting and I'm going to stand up and put that right over here and look at that. Isn't that neat looking? I love the spider, the spider webs, the little bats in there. Super fun. Then we have to decorate up the rest of our card. I have a one inch 
by two and three quarter inch piece of the same designer series paper. We're just gonna use the other side for the front of our card and the banner triple punch. Put that in there and punch that. And then I'm gonna glue this right over here onto my chalkboard. And then, yeah, this is our crushed curry crinkled seam binding. And you can tie a bow or you can use your bow jig if you have one, but you're just gonna tie a bow. And you guys have seen me do this a gazillion times. But I love my bow jig. And get my little scissors out here. Ooh, these are my new snips. I'm really lazy, so some people have scissors that they just keep for their ribbon. I'm lazy, so I just grab whatever scissors and I cut paper and ribbon and everything. So I had to get a new pair of snips because I dulled them on the paper. If you do sewing, you know that's a big no-no to use your ribbon scissors for paper, right? I used to, oh my gosh, I almost used to take the kids' heads off when they would grab my sewing scissors to cut something. And I'd be like, don't you touch those, ma! <laughs> it was a whole thing. Okay, next, hang on, I gotta grab a little punch here. Oh, and I thought, of course, it's going to be the last one I grabbed, but it wasn't. So this is part of the Every Season Punch Pack, this cute little bat. And I'm going to punch out from a scrap of basic black, and I'm going to put this on a little mini glue dot. And while our ribbon is really cute here, I thought, ooh, how much cuter would it be if it had a bat in the middle? And it is stinking adorable now, right? <laughs> I just thought that made all the difference in the world. Okay, I'm going to pop my chalkboard up on dimensionals and get them on my card. Oh, I need an envelope too. I love to stamp up envelopes. Um, I try to always stamp up envelopes, but sometimes when I have a ton and a half of cards going out, it's impossible. So if you get envelopes from me that aren't stamped, that's why. And here comes an envelope. And I think I'm just gonna stamp some of these cute little bats on there. Just like that. Now isn't that a nice little set? What do you guys think? Let me show you some more. Hang on, let me move this out of the way. I vacuumed my office today. Oh my Lord, the floor was atrocious. Now, before I do that, I like to keep my craft sponge in a little plastic bag because it takes a while for that crafting to dry. And I don't want that getting all over my stuff when I throw it back in the drawer in the bin with all of these stamps that I just used. So that's why I put it in a little cello in a little Ziploc bag. Okay, oh, here we go. You guys saw these? If you follow me on my blog, this is the chalkboard technique and I used, what's the stamp set called? Uh, wrapped in plaid, this is the wrapped in plaid suite and isn't that pretty? Look at that, beautiful, beautiful paper and I thought this was just so vintage Christmas with the chalkboard look on it, right? Here's another one. Now this is using the um, Greatest Gifts of Christmas or something like that. Now I can't remember what it's called. Hang on, let me look. I don't want to give you bad information. Oops, you guys know I hate it when I tell you something wrong. Which, if you recall correctly, the um, little punch pack stamp set, this, I remember telling you guys that this punch pack went with this stamp set, and it doesn't. This punch pack comes in a bundle with this, but it works great with this stamp set. But yeah, punch pack, stamp set. So I hate it when I tell you things wrong like that. And of course, I love it when people, and I, I really truly mean this, tell me, hey Kelly, you said it went with that, but it goes with this because I had no idea. 
This is the stamp set where this big Christmas greetings is coming from, and isn't that so pretty? This is an exclusive host set. When you place a minimum $150 order, you earn some stamping rewards. And at $150, you get 10%. So that's $15 in rewards, and this stamp set is $13. So you spend your free rewards on it, you get a free stamp set for $13. I love this one. Okay, there's my second card, just in case you missed it. And here comes my third. Isn't that cool? These are all on my blog. All the instructions, the shopping list are on my blog from Friday. And you always find my blog at www.estampabub.com. But aren't these just cool? So yeah, I love this. Okay, let's keep going here. Oh, I know what else I wanted to show you. Um, that Wicked Stamp set comes with a set of dies. Let me get this out. It's got a spider and then this wicked word in it. So this comes as a bundle if you would like both. You have the opportunity to order both. But I have a card here that I made with the stamp set and the wicked. Now my wicked is die cut on our black foil paper. And so is the starburst under the bat layer is also with our black foil paper. That's a really cool look for Halloween. Yeah, isn't that fun? I thought so. Okay, I have one more thing to make with this. And again, mine is going to be a Halloween thing, but yours could be anything else. And I do have a Christmas one to share with you so you can see that. I am going to be using the Mini Curvy Keepsake Box. And this makes the cutest little box and it's super, super simple. So rather than die cut it ahead of time, I thought I'd wait and show you just how very, very easy it is because I think sometimes you might be a little skeptical, like, well, it's easy for her, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I don't think that went down like that. But it really does go down like this. So I am going to take my die. And again, I'm using that same designer series paper from the Monster Mash. I'm going to put my mini curvy keepsake box on here. And we're going to die cut this. See if I can keep my table from making anybody sick and wiggling too much. Denise says, super cute, or should I say bootiful? I like bootiful. Okay, and then in this die set with the mini keepsake box, you get all of these little labels and these little spriggy things. Oh, and these things. Huh. There's a stamp set that goes along with this, too, and I didn't even get that out yet, so... Um, here is our little box. Now, there are score lines, so you just fold on all the score lines, just like this. And then there's score lines on the ones that have like a look like a little purse handle, and you're gonna fold those backwards. And then, uh, where's my bone folder? Did I, I don't even think I had it out yet. You can take your bone folder and gently curve these that's just helpful it's going to make your box go together a little nicer see what i have here well, this looks like a pretty little flower too <laughs> squirrel okay so you're going to bring these two with the handles together just like that and then this one fits over top there's a slit right there and then this one fits over the other way look at that isn't that cute it's just that simple you guys Die cut it, fold on the lines, boom. This is adorable. Would this not look cute at Thanksgiving with some of our come together paper and people's little names on there? It could be your place setting at Thanksgiving or you could make something fun for all the kids that are coming. Adults like chocolate too, I'm not gonna lie. All right, let's finish this up. Um, I had a scrap of crushed curry and also a scrap of black. And what I did here is I used this little stitched label 
to die cut on the crushed curry. And then I wasn't sure if I wanted crushed curry, so I did a pumpkin pie also, because <laughs> I couldn't make up my mind. So that little label is from the um, mini, what is it called? The mini curvy keepsakes box dies. And then this little spider is right here and that comes with the wicked dies. So I cut one of those out too. And remember I lost the spider one time, but I found it again. So here's our cutie patootie little spider. Is he not adorable? Yeah, I think he's really cute. I'm gonna take and put a mini dimensional on there. Oh, I see that my screen is not <gasps> scrolling again. And Marilyn says candy corn would be great for Thanksgiving or mini peanut butter cup. Ooh, yes, indeed. All right, then I like that idea, Marilyn. What I'm going to do, and you, I'll let you guys decide which one I should put on my box, but I'm going to take the spider web from the Wonderfully Wicked stamp set. And I thought this would be a cute little embellishment for our Halloween box. And I just stamped that spider web on there. And then we're gonna put we're gonna put this on our box. Which one should I use, you guys? Orange or crushed curry? What do you think? Orange or crushed curry? Orange pumpkin pie. You guys are saying it the right way. Okay, I got lots of pumpkin, lots of pumpkin pie. Ooh, caramel sounds good, Penny Lou. I like that too. Okay, I think I'll go with the orange. I'm gonna take my dimensional on my spider and I am going to just put that little spider right down here. And then I was thinking about this. Like, we don't have black baker's twine anymore. That would have worked perfect to tie this right on here, but you don't wanna tie anything onto this handle. Because when people need to get their treat out, they have to open that up, if you see. So you don't want to tie something that can't be untied on this, on this little handle because that won't work. So what I thought is, whoops, hang on, my crown is falling. <laughs> we can't have that. I'm going to use a mini glue dot. And I'm going to attach my little tag right to this top piece that's going to come off when you open it. And I want that skeleton in the front because I think that's pretty cool. See my skeleton guy right there? So I've got my little tag on here. Now, I don't like that there's a hole there and it looks kind of stupid, right? <laughs> For lack of a better word. So I'm just going to take this black glitter organdy ribbon. I love this. And of course, bling, Halloween, perfect, right? And I'm going to tie this into a little knot. Where'd those scissors go? Here they are. And cut it kind of short. Just like that. And then another mini glue dot is going to take and cover up that hole on here. Oh my gosh. Look how stinking cute that is. Now, if I was smart, hang on, because I just got smarter. Yeah, hello, we have black dimensionals. And as I held this up, you can see that white dimensional in there, doggone it. Completely forgot, in the holiday mini catalog are black dimensionals. We have mini and regular size. So I would recommend when you're using a little thing like this to use the black dimensionals, not the white ones. Hello, that was dumb. I'm gonna keep these on my desk so I don't forget to use them. They're in a drawer, I don't see them, I don't think about them, right? Out of sight, out of mind. Okay, and then here's one where I use the other side of the designer series paper. Okay, so that's the book side. And I did use the crushed curry with a little spider. Oh, and you could, well, this one I wound the ribbon through that hole and tied it. This one I just tied a knot and stuck it on top, which is easier. So um, as you go along, you, you get smarter when you're stamping too, <laughs> right? Like, holy cow, that was dumb. Yeah, just like not using the black dimensionals. Hello, Kelly. Okay, then look at how cute this one is. This is the wrapped in plaid designer series paper and our diagonal cherry cobbler ribbon. 
and then a little green rhinestone on there from we have some Christmas rhinestones and again they use that label I got this at a demonstrator event down in by Chicago and this was no I didn't I got this at a demonstrator event here in my area from um, yeah from, from my uplines meeting so super super cute you guys these little things baby shower Halloween Valentine's Day would this look cute sitting on your co-workers desk with a couple chocolates chocolates in it and let me show you what this one has in it because this has candy in it. Uh-oh, hang on. I don't want to ruin it. There we go. Look at that. Three nuggets. Three nuggets fit in there. And I don't like these crackle ones. Does anybody like these? I do not like these. I love dark chocolate. So, and milk chocolate. Hershey's. I'm a trailer trash chocolate girl. I like Hershey's. Um, fine chocolate. Your deli's good, but I don't know. <laughs> I just like, did you notice I'm not putting those two chocolates that I like back in here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I always say I'm a trailer trash chocolate girl because I like Hershey's. It's my favorite. But my friend Mary Olson got me going on the Ghirardelli. Let me see. What did I do with those? They're here. Oh, here they are. The dark chocolate sea salt caramel Ghirardelli's. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I treat myself to one of these, if Bev is watching, hardly ever. Bev is my weight loss coach. <laughs> hardly ever, Bev, but it is a nice treat. Just saying. Yeah, but Mary bought me a bag of those. I ate all those already. <laughs> and they are delicious. Okay, let's keep going here. Hang on, and I will get this mess cleaned up. I'm gonna put my little bits and pieces back in here. Who has this mini curvy keepsake box or whatever it's called? Yeah, it is cute. And I think I will be using it for a whole bunch of different events. Like my daughter Haley, she's probably gonna start having babies here shortly. <laughs> I don't know that for sure. I hope she waits, but it's her decision. And we always had kind of a rule that you should be 30 before you start having children. Because by that time, you've had time to live, go on vacations, be without kids, have a life, explore the world. And then you're ready to be a really great mom. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of people who had kids too early and really um, are a little bitter about it. So, yeah. Okay, next. Here comes a whole bunch of fun. Now, I'm excited to tell you guys about a card challenge that I am going to be offering up today. I will also have this posted on my blog. Whoops, hang on, I just bent something. We can't have that. I have a card challenge that's going to happen today, and it's going to be open until next Sunday. And it's a layout challenge because I don't know, I just like layouts and I like seeing all the different things that people do with one layout. I just get a kick out of it. So here we go with the card that is going to have the layout in it. Let me put my cheat sheet up there so I can give you dimensions. By the way, I will be posting all of the dimensions um, in the description of this video on Facebook when I'm done, and there'll be a link to go directly to my blog when I upload it to YouTube where you can click on it and see all the dimensions there too. Hang on, I'm thirsty. What are you guys drinking tonight? I have my little bottle. It's got my strawberry lemonade in it, and um, yeah, it's good. Oh. Oh, never mind. I was going to tell you something. I had a problem with my nose the other day. It was swollen, and I do remember being on a Facebook Live talking about it. But that was the Facebook Live that I do every Tuesday for my team. We do a question and answer Facebook Live where they get to ask questions, and I come on live and answer, and we can talk about things. So it's kind of a really beneficial little thing. But um, that's where I was talking about it, was on my team Facebook Live. My nose was swollen, and it hurt like somebody punched me. But they did not. And I should show you guys my bruise. Look at my bruise. Can you see it? Yeah. 
I ran into one of my cabinets. Oh my lord, I'm hurting myself all the time. Because <laughs> I'm running too fast, that's why. And I don't run with scissors ever. So, <laughs> I'm so glad we're not all um, crummy tonight with, like last week, it was blurry. There's nothing that I can do about that. That is the internet gods. And we have no control over whether this video is blurry or not. So just know that. Sometimes, though, it's on your end while you're watching it, it's blurry. But on my end, it usually isn't. Last week, it was my end, too. So, yeah. Okay. We are using Birds of a Feather. Stinking adorable. I just, this makes me giggle. All of these make me giggle. So I'm going to show you a really cool little card layout. And you can decide which way you want to make it because there's a couple different ways. And then um, I'm going to have a giveaway. Now, you can join the card layout challenge by sharing a picture of what you've made with this layout right here on my page underneath a graphic that I'm going to put up. So, when you get ready to share, you're going to go to a stamp above. On my Facebook page, you're going to scroll down until you see the layout challenge. And then in the comments, you're going to put your name or whatever. This is the card I made. Yeah, just put this is the card I made. And then you can attach a picture in those comments. That is the only place that you're going to be entered to be in this challenge. Because I can't go all over the place looking for these cards when I go to draw the winner. Okay? So... Right here, where you're watching this video, you're going to scroll down and see until you see the layout challenge. You can do this on your phone or your laptop or your iPad. You're going to click in the comments and attach a picture or take a picture right there. You can take a picture right there of your card and load it up and then you'll be in the challenge. So this is Coastal Cabana, one of my favorite colors. It just makes me happy. This is four and a quarter by 11. And all of these dimensions will be listed for you on my blog so you can do the challenge. Then I have a piece of four by five and a quarter inch whisper white. And I am using the, oh, what's this called? I thought I wrote this down. The knit something or another. Hold on. Who knows what it's called? I looked it up earlier too. It's not cable knit. That one, I believe, is retired. I'm not scrolling again. Hang on. Starbucks. Angela's drinking Starbucks Refresher. I can't even almost say that. Starbucks Refresher. Okay, I'm looking for the folder. Did anybody tell me yet? No. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Hmm. Well, it's called Knit Something or Another. I'm not going to... Oh, Winter Knit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you. Okay. The Winter Knit Embossing Folder. And I took it sideways and added my Whisper White in here. And voila! I already have it done. It's really hard to see in the camera, but it is so pretty. It looks like a knit sweater. Seriously. Okay, we're going to add that to the front of our card. I know Penny Lou says she loved the cable knit folder. I did too. I was so glad that I have it, right? Because it just makes winter cards so fun. Okay, so we have that going on. And then, oops, oops, oops. I'm missing a piece. No, I'm not. Here it is. <laughs> okay, this piece is three and a quarter by eight and a half. And we're going to bring in... Our trimmer and we are going to score it at four and a half so that's going to score it right in half so again this is three and a quarter by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter and I'm going to burnish my edges here then we're going to bring in our two and a quarter inch circle punch and I'm going to push this all the way in, and then you're going to make sure that the fold line is lined up with the side of your punch. 
that just makes it easy so you know it's centered and in the right place. You're going to punch a hole out of there. Now, in case you guys are new to me, this particular um, little bag of goodies. Hang on, I'm looking for my card that I already made so I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you guys know that I have one made already most of the time because otherwise I'm a mess. So these are just all the scraps from when I cut all these layers that go on the inside, outside, all over the place. These are just scraps. And I'm gonna take one of the one inch scraps and we're gonna stamp on it. And we're done with this. I've got my Coastal Cabana ink here. And I'm using Birds of a Feather, wishing you a joyful Christmas from our little flock. So Coastal Cabana, oh, I need to cut this at three and a quarter, so hang on. I forgot about that part. And if I don't do that, then I won't get it centered. So cut, cut that first. That was my one inch strip, cut it three and a quarter. Here comes this cutie patootie. Oh, isn't that pretty? I love that font. All right, now we're gonna clean the stamp off with our chamois. Who's still loving these chamois? I think this is the best invention ever. I love my chamois. And then we're gonna use Real Red. And I'm gonna stamp that. Hmm. Hmm. Hang on, we're gonna stamp our bird first. Sorry, I don't wanna confuse you, but I'm afraid I won't have enough room if I don't do this. Oh, I would've had plenty of room. <laughs> Don't worry. Now I'm going to stamp this. We're stamping that same greeting in real red because I'm going to cut this so that we have two different colors. This is a super easy way without too much fuss of getting two different colors in your sentiment layer. I'm just going to cut this. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue. Um, somebody's talking about the blue embossing plate. And yes, you do need to use that with that cable or that knit embossing folder. You need your blue plate. That's why mine... If you caught my video, that's why mine has a blue star on it. That reminds me that that's one that I need to use my blue plate with. And somebody just asked me the other day, what if you don't have this blue plate? Use six half sheets of cardstock as a shim. That will make up the difference. So just in case you don't. And then add it to your next order because they're $10 and they're going to last forever and you're going to be so much happier. Okay, so here's this. And I need to do one other thing here. How many of you have this decorative ribber, ribbon border punch? Yeah, I forget about this thing, but I love using it. So there's some little lines on the front here. I know it's hard to see, but you're going to put your cardstock in up to that little line that's right there and punch. And when you're punching, you really need to use the part of your hand that is the strongest. And that for me is right here. I cannot punch this with my thumb. My thumb is not that strong, but my hand right here can do it. Once you have that done, you're going to move your cardstock down so that it's over top of the decoration there, completely over top of it and lined up and punch again. And keep doing that until you have your whole layer or however big of a piece done that you need. I'm going to put this in the garbage because I vacuumed today. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise I would have just shuffled it right onto the floor. But I like to keep things nice for just a tiny bit of time. <laughs> okay, now, this, I probably even shouldn't say this, but let's, I'm real if nothing else, right? This whole thing doesn't do too much for me, but I love this little scalloped edge. So the rest of it is like, eh, whatever. But um, I love that little scalloped edge. So I'm going to take and put a thin little line of glue along the bottom of my sentiment layer. And then I'm just going to bring it in here so there's a little bit of that red scallop edge sticking out. And that rocks my socks. Like, that is stinking adorable. It's just a way to do a little extra something with my greeting that 
really makes it spectacular, I think. So here we go. We're gonna add this to the front of our little panel. This is our front, whoops, hang on, I didn't do a very good job burnishing that edge because it looks crooked and that will never make me happy. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit anal about stuff like that. Okay, here we go. And I'm gonna put this kind of right near the bottom. Now I'm leaving a big gap between that circle punch. Isn't that cute? I just think it's cute. We're gonna bring in this curly ribbon. This is also in the holiday mini catalog. And we're just gonna tie a bow. Draw it in here a little bit so it's not so obnoxious. There we go. And scissors. And I like to fray these because I think that looks cute. It reminds me of Haley's hair on her wedding day. No, Haley, I'm just kidding. If she's still watching, oh my gosh, she might kill me. <laughs> it rained and she has super curly hair. So she was mad because it got fuzzy. I thought it looked beautiful, but whatever. I'm just the mom, right? Yeah. Okay. There we go, mini glue dot, and we're gonna put that right here. So that's another cute little embellishment. Okay, um, glue. This little panel is gonna go right here on the front, and I'm just gonna center that. And then we're gonna take our little bird. I've got my Stampin' Blend markers out here. I'm gonna use the Dark Pool Party and do just a little bit of shading work on the wings and the bottom of the bird and the tail and maybe up here on his little hair. Yeah, that's good. Oh, how about the top of the wing right there? Okay, and then I'm gonna come in and blend the rest of this. Cute. Then I've got our Dark Mango Melody for his little beak and the star. Real red for his hat. I just thought of something. Oh my Lord, I must do it. And hang on. a crazy person I'm gonna use puff paint on his hat just popped into my head funny how those things happen isn't it yes Suzette said puff paint yes great minds think alike now I think you're supposed to shake this does it say that somewhere as you guys yeah shake before using apply a thin line and then heat with the heat tool Okay, so I'm gonna punch this out first because otherwise my punch won't fit over the puff paint. and We would hate to have that happen, right? So that again is your two and a quarter inch punch. And then I'm gonna add my puff paint. Super cute. Oh, shoot. Mm, that was a lot. Hang on, I have a tissue here. Be careful because this puff paint is really, really runny. And I forgot. I was so excited that I completely forgot about that. I'm just going to kind of spread it around there. I just pushed a tiny bit out on his little um, end of his hat. Okay, here comes our heat tool. This is going to get loud. Can you see it puffing up? Oh my gosh, that was genius. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna put some dimensionals. Let me get, oh, I closed that up. We're gonna put some dimensionals. Now the pictures that are gonna be on my blog don't show puff paint. So this is an exclusive just for you guys. 
yeah no puff paint on the one that I did because I didn't think of it because why because it's in a drawer it's not sitting on my desk where it's like you know biting at my ankles like a little chihuahua saying use me use me <laughs> ouch that was hot I just set my arm on the edge of my heat tool wonder how I get bruises like that by doing stupid things like that okay here we go now you're gonna take this and you're gonna put it right back through so this opens up look at how cute that is okay and then we're gonna take the enjoy the season that comes in the birds of a feather real red ink Um, Irene just asked if you can color the puff paint. I'm assuming that you can. Hang tight. We'll find out. This is a good place to try that, don't you think? I think it is. Okay, so here's our front. Now, I'll show you some other variations. You could just make this your card, and so this part right here would be your back, but I actually made it a double card. Does that make sense? So, like, this part, you cut that off. This could be your card. But I made it a double card. Oh, I almost dipped my... Oh, I did just a little bit. Dipped it in the red, but we're okay. Um, where's that other white piece? Here comes our other white piece. Now, this is three and three quarters by five. And I am going to stamp this pretty little sentiment from Greatest Part of Christmas. And it says, wishing you a Christmas of smiles and love that will last all year and I love that saying and then I'm going to close this up I've got Costa Cabana and I'm using the little snowflakes this is the stamp set that goes with the punch pack okay I'm using these little snowflakes and I'm just gonna add a few of them on the inside of my card then I'm gonna do the same thing that I did for my last card and that is to add this to a real red layer. I'm going to close this. And then to the inside of my card. So we've got a little pop of color on the inside. What do you think? I think this is a little plain and I need to do a little something else. So let's do that little something else. I'm going to take this little snowflake and I'm going to stamp a few of them, three, on these scraps. And this is a way to really utilize your piece of cardstock, right? Because that is really a scrap now. And then our little punch pack has the heart, the leaf, the snowflake, and the bat, wherever that went. Hang on, i got to get this back in here I ruin stuff. Okay, so we've got these little snowflakes. I'm going to take the little snowflake, punch them out, and I want three of them. I always kind of do things in odd numbers. That one isn't very straight, but you'll get the idea. Okay, so here we go. We've got three little snowflakes, and I'm going to just add a little dot of glue to the back of each one and I'm going to set these right on my Coastal Cabana layer and I just want them to be very random <gasps> now I think I have it what do you guys think is that not stinking adorable Joyce says she loves that I finish the inside and decorate my envelopes yeah it's um it's a great idea. Did I do an envelope? Yeah, I did do an envelope for that one. So, hang on. I just knocked something on the floor. Let me grab an envelope right here. And we'll do some snowflakes. And this will match. There's another snowflake in the set, too, by the way. Did you see how I made a little blurb with the edge and I just covered it up yeah we're resourceful that way aren't we <laughs> yep there we go super super cute okay so someone asked 
if you can color the puff paint. So let's try that. How about that? I'm just going to take a scrap. I'm going to put some puff paint on here. We're going to heat it up and be a mad scientist. Wow, that really puffed. Look at how much that puffed up. That's crazy, right? Okay, let's see if we can color it. I want to make sure it's cooled off. It's going to flatten it. Ouch, darn it, I did it again. I keep setting my arm down on that. Because I don't have a guard on it. Yours has a guard on it, but mine fell off. <laughs> it's dangerous. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you can color on puff paint. This is an alcohol marker. Look at that. So there you go. Question answered. And Rhonda says, if you add ink refill to the puff paint, it won't puff. Oh, good to know. But you can color it this way. So, yeah. Betty says she likes this card. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have some more to show you with the same layout. We're going to talk about that layout challenge. So hang tight. Let me move some of my stuff out of the way. Oh my gosh. It's amazing how I can destroy an area in about three seconds. <laughs> I know we've been on for longer than three seconds, but seriously, I had this all cleaned up. And now it's just a big mess. Okay, I'm going to leave that out here. This way. Get all this stuff out of the way so I can show you these other cards. So this was our one cutie patootie that we just made. And here we go. There's our envelope. Where did the rest of my cards go? Hang on, here they are. Okay, are you guys ready for this? So this is how this card layout all started. I went to a demonstrator event that was local to me through my upline. And this was one of the swap cards. Is that not so super cute? And I thought, that is an awesome layout. And I apologize, I can't remember who designed this card, but it was somebody at the event. And she was super, super sweet. And I'm terrible with names. But that's where all of this came from, is this one layout. Now, this card doesn't open. This is the, this is the card base, and then this is the card part, okay? And then I added the little bats on here from the punch pack because, well, it's Halloween and why wouldn't I? Flax ribbon on here and some more bats on the inside. She also used the stylish scroll embossing folder. That's part of the Monster Mash suite. And then next comes, so we have Christmas, okay? Here we have Halloween. Here comes Thanksgiving, and what do you guys think of this? This thing made me giggle. So I took the Come Together Designer Series paper, and I glued a piece of it to that flap. This is the same size flap, and I had to die cut the circle because the turkey is bigger than the other three images in here, so instead of using this two and a quarter inch punch, I had to use the layering circle dies. So I die cut a hole in both layers, I used Mary Merlot and Crushed Curry here for these little leaves from that leaf pack. On my blog, I have listed all the colors I used to color in my cute little turkey. Here's the inside. I added a little banner so that it would pop a little bit more than just stamping the greeting right on, on the pretty peacock. And a dimensional, mini dimensional with the little leaf here and Crushed Curry. Now this card does open again and here's the inside that happy thanksgiving greeting is coming from day of thanks this is in the mini catalog and then the little leaves are stamped in crushed curry mary merlot and pretty peacock isn't that stinking adorable okay i have another one too hang on my arm is burning <laughs> that really hurt this is how i hurt myself stamping isn't supposed to be dangerous <laughs> Okay, next. Are you ready for this? Look at how cute this is. So 
So as long as I was playing with this paper, I thought, hey, I wonder if I could stamp that chicken right on this um, linen or burlap looking designer series paper. And I did. And then I took my stamp and chalk marker because I had that out from the chalkboard technique in case we were going to use it. And this is how my mind works. I colored in this part of the chicken. I used stamp and blend alcohol markers for the red and yellow part. The little punch, one of these, this little punch right here that comes in this punch pack right here. Again, with that um, decorative ribbon border to get that little bit of scallop there. I also punched out a piece of cardstock and then die cut the scallop so I would get a little frame there. I used Healing Hugs sentiment that says wishing you a quick and complete recovery because we're sending love. And I thought, how cute would that be for a get well card? And this white layer that's on here is actually embossed with the Pinewood Planks embossing folder because I thought that was quite appropriate for a chicken card, right? Now this card does not open. This is it. So this one and this one. This is all, there's no more that opens. These two open here and here. Now, you can do your challenge card any way you'd like. You can make it go sideways and have it open like that. Whatever you want to do as long as you're using the same layout. You can use a square or an oval instead of the circles. Whatever works for you. You must submit your photograph by next Sunday, which is the October 6th at noon my time, which is central time. And you're going to go right here where you're watching this video on my page. You're going to find a graphic that's going to show this layout. Underneath of it, just as if you were going to go type a comment, oh, that's a cute card, Kelly. You're going to go in there and click on the camera and add a photograph of your card. This is the only place that I'm going to look and select winners of this challenge. So I just want you to know that. If you post them on my VIP group, if you post them on our team page, if you email them to me, the only ones that are entered for the drawing are going to be right here where you're watching me right now and only under the graphic that I put on here. That keeps everything in one place and everybody can go there and look at all your cards rather than having to scroll all over the place. And it saves me a lot of time too. So these are all my cards for tonight. I showed you again the chalkboard technique. Here's our card layout. These are super cute. This little birds of a feather is stinking adorable. I love it. And you've got Valentine's, Christmas, Halloween, and Thanksgiving, again, all in one set. That delicious happy Thanksgiving is coming from the day of thanks. I love this. And I think maybe next week I'll be making some cards for you guys using this because we need to get Thanksgiving cards made, right? And then two every season is a perfect accompaniment to the birds of a feather and this is the one that you can bundle with this little punch pack and there's oh here's the bat you get four punches in this in a bundle if you choose but i like all the sentiments in here and then the leaf matches the leaf stamp this heart matches the heart oh that's what i was going to do for you guys i've stamped all those out almost forgot this matches the heart there we go and then we've got the leaf. There's our leaf. The bat, there's a stamp for the bat, or you can, of course, just punch it out of black, but I think it's cool that, look at how cute that is. You've got that little bat. And then also, you, you saw the snowflake one that we made that little bird card with. There we go, so, woohoo! I love these. Okay, now, thank you guys so much. I'm seeing all your comments come in. Um, if you have any questions that I missed, please ask them right now. My computer screen does not scroll up with the questions, okay? So um, I have to keep pushing it up and then I miss some things. So if you have a question that I didn't, whoops, sorry, 
that I didn't answer yet, please feel free to ask it right now. I'm watching the comments. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you would like to place an order, I always appreciate your orders. You're going to find my blog right here in that right hand column is um, an online ordering button. If your order is under $150, use this host code. If it's over $150, do not use that host code. You're going to get some stamping rewards and I definitely want you to have those. I always, always appreciate your orders. It's what keeps me in business. Remember, if you would like to get a hold of that pre-cut card stock pack for my last online class, there are 12 cards and a box, and you will get all of the card stock to make them. Cut, punched, die cut, unless it's the leaves from the die cuts that go with the come together bundle. Um... Let me know if you would like one of those. You're going to find in the right-hand column on my blog is online classes. You'll find it there. You can click on that PayPal button to order. You can still order the class with the pre-cut card stock for $40. You can get just the online class and cut your own card stock for $25. Or you can order the entire suite from me. And when you do that, you not only get the online class for free, but as a bonus, you're going to get the, the pre-cut card stock pack also. Lots of people have been taking advantage of that because it really is the best deal. So, any questions? Let me know. I am always happy to answer questions. Arliss says, love all your projects tonight. Again, so many ideas. Thank you so much, Arliss. That just touches my heart. Thanks, you guys. Elizabeth says, love all your cards. Mary shared from Hartford, Connecticut. Jane Freeman loves the chicken. Mary Olson, there you are. Fabulous night. I miss you, Mary Olson. Cute cards, clever idea. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, Wendy says, these weren't on my wish list before. They are now, right? You're welcome. <laughs> I know. I totally get what you're saying. You know what wasn't on my wish list? This. It really wasn't. But then I looked at these and I thought, oh, that has so much potential. I had to get it, and I'm so glad that I did, <laughs> but I totally know what you're saying. We can't just buy everything. I know. So, Angie says, if I lived in America, I'd order from you. Angie, thank you so much. I so appreciate that. Where are you? Are you in Australia, or are you in Canada? I know that I've spoken to you before. Ah, oh, Denise says, wow, such cuteness all in one night. Thank you. You are so welcome, Denise. Thank you. Um, Becky's asking, what was the dimension of the smaller card with the hole punch? The smaller card. Oh, this piece right here. This is eight and a half by three and a quarter. And then I've scored it in half at four and a quarter. So three and a quarter by eight and a half score at four and a quarter. And I do have all of these dimensions typed up and I will put them above this video on Facebook, as soon as we get done here, I will just paste them right in there with a whole bunch of links. There's going to be a link to my blog. There's a link to my online classes. If you don't want to go search, you just go to the description of this video and you're going to find all the links, a link to my store. There's links everywhere. If you want to subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, don't forget how stinking adorable these kits are. There'll be a link so you can subscribe to Paper Pumpkin. We'll have that there also. Yeah, links to everything. I like things to be easy for you guys because there's nothing more frustrating than ha trying to hunt and peck around. I hate that. Who has time for that? Nobody. All right. Um, I think I'm done. Don't forget to share my video if you're coming on late, whether you're watching live, whether you're watching on the replay and whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can share my video on both platforms. Um, please give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. That's helpful. And also on um, YouTube, give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, don't give me a thumbs down. Nobody deserves all that. <laughs> yeah, that always makes me laugh. But I mean, seriously, <laughs> nobody needs a thumbs down, right? If you don't like something, just move along. Unless it's um, offensive. And I don't think I've offended anybody here tonight. <laughs> Except maybe with my burns and my bruises. But yeah, no, we'll be fine. All right, you guys, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go see what my husband is doing out in the garage. He made for supper tonight a pork roast with potatoes and carrots and onions and big 
mushrooms. Oh my gosh, the whole house smells delightful. So I might just have to go eat. <laughs> All right. I'm looking to see if there's any other cards and I don't see any. Sarah Simon, thank you so much. And Lola, you are so welcome. You guys, I so appreciate all the love that you send me. Makes me, um, warms my heart, right? Yeah. Okay, I will be back next week, Sunday, which is October 6th at 7 p.m. Central Time. And, um... Like I said, I'm probably going to, I want to do something for Thanksgiving, but I don't know what yet. And so just know that here's what I don't want to happen. I don't want you to go, oh, I don't make Thanksgiving cards and send them out. So I don't need to watch that. It's not about what I'm making. It's about what you learn. This layout, right, is good for everything. And if you don't like Halloween cards and you looked at this and thought, oh, she's making Halloween cards. I'm not going to watch. You'd have missed this whole layout, which is awesome. So I always try to make things more than about just the stamp set or more than about just the holiday. So just know that I work really hard to try and bring everybody things that they can use regardless of whether they do Halloween or Valentine's Day or Thanksgiving. This is good for everything, right? Okay, my throat is getting dry again. Yeah, Lauren says, great layout. I see Christmas cards with that layout. This layout is easy. And it's fun, and it's kind of a wow, if I do say so myself. Yeah, because this is pretty cool. People are going to be very impressed with your mad stamping skills when you make this puppy, right? And that puff paint, ooh, that's delicious. <laughs> okay, you guys, thank you so much. I appreciate all the love, and I appreciate that you watched my video tonight. I had a great time, as always. I love doing these Facebook Lives with you. Now, if you placed an order with me, you should also have access to my VIP Rewards Facebook group. And that is an exclusive group that I keep just for my customers that order through my Stamping Up store. Okay? If you do not have access to that group or you don't know if you have access to that group, right now you can, when we're done here, you can type in in the search engine, um, a stamp above VIP. And it should pop up for you. If you've ordered from me and you're not in that group, you definitely want to get in it. I am going to start every fall. I start doing exclusive Facebook Lives just for my VIPs. So I'm going to be starting that soon. I want to make sure everybody who has placed an order in my Stampin' Up! store is in that group so that you will get those benefits too. Just a little something extra that I can do for the customers that are um, helping me earn my commission. <laughs> <laughs> the lack of a better word. Okay, guys, I'm going to take off. Have a great week. I will see you again on Sunday night. Bye-bye.